Would you pray with me? Father, we come before you today and we really do not have the capacity to comprehend how difficult it was for you to give your son to us as a savior, as a sacrifice for us. Lord, we long for the day when we will see your son for who he is, where we will worship him for who he is. Lord, I pray that as we use this time now that you would be pleased with how we remember him. And I pray it in Christ's name, amen. All right, this is the point in our service where we take some time to remember Jesus around his table. It's a time for Christians to remember what Christ has done for them in his death in their place at the cross. We're gonna be taking a wafer and a bit of juice. These are symbols of the body and the blood of Christ that was given on behalf of all of those who would put their trust in him. To remember Jesus rightly this morning, we are going to be looking at a passage that helps us understand the superiority of knowing Christ. So if you have your Bibles, will you turn with me to Philippians chapter three? We're gonna be looking at verses seven through 11 today. And if you don't actually have a Bible, would you just raise your hand? We've got some men coming down the aisles. They can get a copy of God's word to you. If you don't actually own a Bible, please use this as a gift from us to you so that you can begin reading God's word for yourself. The setting here in the beginning of Philippians chapter three is that Paul is warning the church in Philippi. He's warning them that there are false teachers and that these teachers are dangerous men. They're dangerous men because they put their confidence in their own flesh and the teaching that comes forth from that flesh. And Paul is explaining that prior to knowing Christ, he put his confidence in his own flesh and he lists the ways in which his confidence was more based in goodness than any other man. He had more reason than anybody else to put his confidence in his own flesh because he had a physical circumcision and he had a really strong Jewish heritage and he had the best religious training possible and he had zeal, he had lots of zeal willing to persecute Christians. We get to verse seven, we see that Paul is going to explain what is truly valuable and it all has to do with knowing Christ. So let's read verses seven through 11 together. Paul writes, whatever things were gained to me, these things I have counted as loss for the sake of Christ. And more than that, I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them but rubbish, so that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness of God, which comes on the basis of faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death in order that I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. So in verse seven, Paul is looking back at his personal accomplishments that he saw as an unbeliever, and he considered them to be a gain. He considered them to be things that gave him an advantage over other men, reasons why men should listen to him. But now, after he has come to Christ, Paul considers those things to be a loss or a detriment the reason why he considers them so is because those things were the things that prevented him from knowing Christ. And so in verse eight, he talks about knowing Christ and he turns his thoughts to the things of this world. And he says that the benefits of all of those things in this world, they just pale in comparison to the experience of actually knowing Christ. When we look at the end of the verse, we see that Paul sees those worldly benefits as more than a detriment, he actually sees them as rubbish. And what he means there is something that actually has no worth and is truly detestable. And the reason why he sees those things as that is because that is what those things would be if they kept him from knowing Christ. In verse nine, we see that the person who knows Christ this way has a new identity. Their identity is that they are in Christ. And to be in Christ means to be encapsulated to be surrounded, to be robed with the righteousness of God, such that when God looks at that person, he no longer sees their human merits. He doesn't see the family that they come from. He doesn't see their understanding of the word. 
Rather, he sees something else. He sees something else that is much, much better. He sees his own righteousness. He sees the righteousness that he confers upon a person when he saves that person. And that and that alone is the thing that is pleasing to him. And in verse 10, we see the benefits of that new identity in Christ. The person actually knows Christ. They know Christ intimately and personally. Much like the difference between knowing about somebody and actually knowing someone as a close friend. You might know about somebody, you might know their age, you might know where they live, but you know your close friend. You know what they love, you know what they have trouble with, you help them, they help you, they seek you out. You know that person intimately. Paul says that a person who is in Christ actually knows Christ intimately in that same way. And in addition to that, one of the benefits of being in Christ is that you know the power of Christ's resurrection. You have the ability to walk in newness of life. Sin is no longer your master, it's, you're not a slave to it. And finally, Paul says another benefit is that you know the fellowship of Christ's sufferings, that you're at a place in your walk with the Lord where you gladly accept the privilege of being persecuted and suffering because of the name of Christ. And all of these benefits taken together at the end of that verse, at the end of verse 10, are what caused Paul to do something that is characteristic of believers, and that is that they die to their own self-rule. And Paul closes this section in verse 11 by helping us understand something very important, and that is that dying to your own self-rule is how one enters into the next age with Christ. There simply is no other way. So that's the Jesus we want to remember this morning. We want to remember the Jesus in whom there is more value in knowing than any other thing. Jesus who possesses the righteousness that when it's imputed into us, it gives us a right standing before God and we're acceptable in his eyes. The Jesus who will one day come again to receive his church to himself and rule over them in eternity. What we're gonna to celebrate today, the Lord's table is people who know, is for people who know Jesus in that way. It's for people who look at Christ in that way. They actually know him. They possess his righteousness, not their own. They trust in that righteousness, not in the righteousness of their own. And they're yearning for the day when Christ will come back and they can be united with him personally, when he will rule over them forever. So if that's you and you're here with us today and you know Christ that way, we just encourage you, we welcome you. We're glad for you to join us in taking the elements. When they come to you, just think about your savior and your master in these ways. Think about him and when your heart is prepared, take the elements on your own. If you're here today and Christ is not your Lord and he's not your master, what I wanna help you understand is the things that I've shared with you this morning are not just Paul's thoughts, these are actually God's thoughts. And you can see that if you drop down to verse 18 in our passage, you can see that the end of the person who is their own ruler, the end of the person who serves their own appetites, who's confident in their own self-rule is destruction. God's design is that he brings salvation to the person who looks away from themselves and looks to the person of Jesus as their master and their Lord to give them the righteousness that they need before God. So our plea to you today is that you would throw off your confidence in your own self-rule and throw off your confidence in your own ability to present yourself acceptable before God because you can't and humbly submit yourself to Christ as the worthy master over you. I'll be available after the service out at the, the desk by the info table. Uh, somebody will be here near these doors after the service. The other pastors are available. So are the people in the row next to you. Uh, any of us would love to talk with you about knowing Christ. Men come and serve us. And uh, when we're done, I'll come and close our time in prayer.